Welcome back. Let's get into it and have a little talk about current status in Rising Eagles. Uh, looking at the Austerlitz campaign or the Austerlitz battle in particular, there's Napoleon. He declared himself and actually put himself at high risk in a combat just to bump up the uh, odds a little bit, the DRMs a bit. A bit of fun there, a uh, high risk maneuver, but it all paid off in the end, nevertheless. So <clears throat> let's have a look at current state of the battle and then we'll explain what the, what the next steps are. So you'll see here, uh, we have uh, the reserve cav formation has been exposed. They chose that as their, as that was one of the last movements. I haven't put the units on the board yet because, uh, well, we'll see in a sec. So uh, that is a, gonna be a significant punch of cavalry coming onto the board. Now, obviously here we've got the Imperial Guard that's been activated and we use the, the Grenadiers here to uh, wrap up and finish knocking out four or five reduced units from the right wing which is uh, currently being poorly managed by Bagration. Bagration had elected to retreat and leave his boys behind and uh, is trying to get back uh, basically undercover and try and uh, avoid the uh, demoralization uh, rule for his formation. He only is allowed to lose two more units, I believe, before that comes into effect. Unfortunately, he's got two guys trapped here that will probably die, which will demoralize him. But nevertheless, he, you know, he'll, he's out of the game anyway. They're basically combat ineffective for, for, for all intents and purposes. So uh, that that's a, a significant blow. But what's more important perhaps is what's going over here on the right flank of the guards. And there comes the air conditioner. Uh, so Constantine has not done a good job managing these boys so far, uh, but and the problem really is the orders system here. We've not been able to change orders for the Russians, so they they said they were going to come and guard this area, these guys, and they are. And you know, arguably speaking, they're they're probably breaking the rules a little bit within in terms of how far away they are from this particular location. And I, we just haven't been able to get the die rolls to change orders for them. So. Uh, Nevertheless, the reason why this is under threat is that these Cossacks and Hussars here have, uh, you know, they're, they're fine units, but when they're, when they're hit and broken, they drop down to ones and fours, and they are, they are in a sorry state there. And they, they had to hold, they had to hold and fight. They could have retreated, but they had to hold and fight, otherwise it was gonna roll up, it was gonna expose, you know, Lanes, Lanes was gonna come through here and just knock everything out. Uh, the, the Guards de Corps here have done a great job of holding the town of Krug. Um, you know, the massive QFT rating of 10 has really aided their defense there. And of course, this artillery has just knocked the crap out of everything that's attempted to attack this guy. Oh, in fact, he should be, was that a Q? No, that was just a retreat. So he uh, had to retreat. This dude uh, off, off screen, lost a step and routed and uh, so we've been splitting our effort between here and here with these guys. They're trying to move up this way, but then do the attacking. Because, you know, I don't want to use the Imperial Guard. I used them one time uh, to, uh, to do what we needed them to do. Excuse me. You know, they're all the way down there. We, did, we, we used them uh, effectively uh, to, to give us a punch. And now we're, we're saving them and all of their capabilities to uh, move forward and then engage with this uh, Russian guard here if that in fact happens. So that's on the right wing of the board and you can see over here we've actually captured uh, this little town here, the name's under here, it starts with a G, it's uh, Gozikowitz, I think it is. And those folks have done a noble job getting into that little town there, but you know, that we've not been able to progress past there. A, because I haven't had the activations <clears throat> because the turns are ending so quickly, and B, 
because uh, there's been some stiff resistance at this uh, this bridge and this village here. It's caused a bit of a problem. Now it is uh, actually the one of the weakest portions of the French line, and if we were as the coalition player able to break through here, we would in fact be able to get behind the enemy lines, maybe go capture uh, some flags back there. As you can see, there's two flags back over there. But once again, my orders are to capture here and not go running off down, down the road. So we can't just go do that willy nilly. We would have to earn the right to do that via the die rolls that occur earlier in the turn. All right, well, what's going on with uh, the emperor or the, uh, the czar of uh, Russia? He is very close to dying. So he has been, uh, I, thought, I thought this left wing was gonna do way better than it did, but they just got their asses handed to them by Soleil, or whatever his name is, Soul here. Just kicked ass. And I only, I've only lost three or four steps in, in amongst all this, and just being able to, A, once we got close to here, uh, we, we saw how open this section was down here, so we changed our orders and, and set Pratzenberg as the, as the location for our main effort, so we can, we can you know, fight through here versus having to fight around here, and that changes uh, significantly, right? That, that allows us to be more flexible around here and continue to move down, down the road. So clearly, clearly next turn, because the turn has ended, uh, the noon turn has ended, um, with this freaking die roll here, uh, we'll pick up these two flags this turn, which I was hoping to pick up, uh, you know, I should have picked, I should have activated this formation and not, uh, not uh, lands. I should have, I should have activated these guys and we would have picked up these two uh, flags here and probably knocked these guys out of here. But even if I didn't, I would have picked up these two. So what that does, and I'm gonna show you one more thing in a minute here. Where's that, I've got a note here somewhere about the, uh... oh, I'll find it soon. Uh, let's have a look at this far left wing. So, uh, yeah, kind of Maya and uh, Davo have been going at it. I've also had uh, Bucks Howden trying to get across the river here. And these guys were really, really slow off the bat. Uh, I, I don't know why. I, I, just, I just never got around to getting them activated. And when I was started activating them, I was trying to hide them through the fog. And I should have just rushed up and attacked Telnitz. That was a big mistake. So that, that's negatively Im impacted the Russian uh, coalition forces pretty heavily. Because there's one or two flags you can pick up here, I think, if you get in fast. And so that was a big mistake on the coalition part. So what that means is, as we have a look at the map, right? You know, we have a look at the map. These, if that force wraps up, right? And knocks out those guys or isolates those guys, we can turn uh, this whole core, the whole fourth core around and attack these dudes in the rear. And you know, realistically, it's it's over at that point. From a victory condition standpoint, let's see. Where's that piece of paper? It's. Uh, I think we are at. Yeah. The there's 18 uh, flags on the board total, and the French control 12 of them. That's one shy of an automatic marginal victory for the French. Clearly, if we picked up these two here this turn, that's gonna, that's gonna drive that uh, result more aggressively. But then, uh, does it change after 1 p.m.? I don't think it does. There's a, yeah, there's a sudden death there's a sudden death rule for some other things as well, but it's not, they're, they're not gonna happen. This coalition is not gonna be able to uh, drive that sort of result. So I think, I think we're at, uh, while it looks all very interesting and I wouldn't mind keep on, keeping on playing, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, uh, kind of done, right? We've got this core has had it 
Alexander is probably going to die in this uh, little conflagration here around uh, Pratza. And the Bucks Howden might escape there, but with, with one core, the Reserve Cav being released, uh, the Grenadiers, Fifth Corps, and the Imperial Guard coming up to fight in this lane right here. This lane here. Uh, it's it's going to be just a massacre. And I feel like in terms of gameplay value, we're probably at a nice stopping point. I can visualize what's going to happen. I, I can't see effective defense here. I can't see a way to kind of come back and turn it around, even with some, maybe some aggressive attacks here, because these defenses, well, these are only sevens here, uh, but, and that's so we have attacking with a net, probably a net minus one, and I've got Artie and all of these, uh, well, that guy doesn't have Artie, so I mean, this is a, I can move that up to there, but this is a chance here, we could possibly, this corner here, 16, let's see what we could do, 2016, yeah, what have I got there? 10, 15, 25, yeah, 30. We could get 30 on 16 there. 30, 30, we could get 3 to 1 on that guy there. That'd be a good attack to do if we could do it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not going to it's not gonna make a huge difference. Uh, this Imperial Guard's going to come up and just start chewing stuff to pieces. So, I thought that was uh, an interesting interesting little exploration of the battle. It really, really, this system to me really shined with the command rules, the way they're structured. And the combat is uh, very subtle and there's some thought that needs to go into it. And you can, you can imagine enough of the core things that are important in a Napoleonic battle i.e. cavalry, countercharges, uh, the use of artillery, uh, effective uh, melee tactics and combined arms, there's some of that as well. So, and of course the influence of leadership uh, across the board and the, the, the ability to change orders and whatnot. So all of that comes into this at a, at a more, I would say, I'll use the word superficial, but maybe subtle. Subtle but simple, right? Uh, it would be the, the best way to describe it. And, uh, and we're using the context of La Bataille to be the foil with which we compare. I don't believe that uh, much older, creakier systems like uh, Zucker's NLB system uh, are anywhere near as elegant or refined or thoughtful or accurate in gameplay. Uh, and in mechanics uh, as this system is. This, this totally takes, uh, in terms of complexity, this is as simple as Zucker's NLB system. It is as pretty, if not prettier. It is as accurate. Uh, can't uh, comment, you know, what you, what you, the only thing you don't get in this game is the fantastic write-ups that Kevin Zucker does on the, uh, you know, the day-to-day -day actions that occurred in and around the battle. So. Uh, I think this is the the heir the heir to the NLB system. Should these folks decide to actually go ahead and, and publish all the titles that they could, if they chose to, A fabulous system. Really enjoying the gameplay. We'll probably do some sort of full review at some point, or uh, you know, uh, comments on the game system in more detail at some other, some other point. All right, I'm rambling on. Talk to you guys soon. Look forward to uh, the next title. And now the air conditioner goes off. All right, take care.